Hello students, welcome back to our online classes for general knowledge. I, Miss Jaya, your general knowledge teacher. So students, today we are going to study page number 34, Sun, Earth and the Moon. Page number 35, Healing Plants. And page number 36, Life Cycle. So, let us begin with page number 34. And on this page, we are having some MCQs. So, let us start. Yes. Now, our heading is Tick the correct option. The very first is the moon revolves round the dash. And your options are earth, sun, Jupiter. So your answer will be earth. The moon revolves round the earth. Second one is the moon get its light from the dash. And your options are sun, stars, earth. So your answer will be sun. The moon gets its light from the sun. Third one. How long does it take the earth to travel once round the Sun. And your options are about 24 hours, about 28 days, about 12 months. So your correct answer is about 12 months. So earth takes about 12 months to travel once round the sun. Fourth one, what shapes are the earth, sun and the moon? And your options are round and flat, cuboid, roughly spherical. So your correct answer is roughly spherical. Fifth one, about how long does it take for the moon to orbit the earth? And your options are 26 days, 28 days or 21 days. So your correct answer is 28 days. Sixth, when the visible portion of the moon is increasing, the moon is dash. Your options are waxing, full, waning. So your correct answer is vexing. When the visible portion of the moon is increasing, the moon is vexing. 7. When there is no moon in the sky, it is called a new moon, full moon or crescent moon. Your correct answer is new moon. When there is no moon in the sky, it is called a new moon. Number 8. The earth's axis is slightly tilted. What does this cause? Day or night? Years or seasons? Your correct answer is season. Ninth. When the moon is located between the sun and the earth, we have a dash. Solar eclipse, lunar eclipse or shooting star? Yes, your correct answer is solar eclipse. When the moon is located between the sun and the earth, we have a solar eclipse. Number 10. The earth is divided into two halves. What are these halves known as? Poles, 
latitudes or hemispheres? And your correct answer is hemisphere. The earth is divided into two halves and it is known as hemisphere. So that is all for page number 34. Now we will start with our next topic that is healing plants. Now, before continuing this, we just know, we just try to know that what is healing plant. Yes, a healing plant is a plant that is used with the intention of maintaining health to be administered for a specific condition or both whether in modern medicine or in traditional medicine. So now we will study about some medicinal plant or healing plants one by one. So let us begin with a healing plant. Number one is garlic plant. Garlic, Allium sativum, is a root crop, meaning the bulb grows underground of the family. Alia K. It is among the oldest of all cultivated plants. In fact, it its species name sativum means cultivated. The leaves are long, narrow and flat like grass. It is the member of the same group of plant as the onion, chive and leek. Next one is aloe vera and the another name of aloe vera is Grit Kumari. Now, let us see what are the benefits of aloe vera. Yes, green leaves contain aloe gel and a sticky yellow residue called latex. And its benefits are, it helps in burn healing, wound healing, treat sunburn, radiation induced skin reactions, Aloe with conditioner for silkier, smoother hair. Take orally to reduce cholesterol or triglycerides for a healthy heart. Next one is lavender. Using unsweetened tea as a hair rinse to help reduce hair loss and dandruff. Using the dried flowers in a sleep and dream pillows in potpourris, sachet and tucked in drawers to freshen clothing and repel moats. Putting a few drops of oil into warm bath water for a refreshing and relaxing treat. The stems with the leaves spread stripped can be burned like an incense stick and can also be used in crafts such as basket weaving and making lavender vents. A rub down of lavender oil before retiring to bed has been used to relieve nighttime leg muscles, sperms. A few drops of oil rubbed into the skin has been used traditionally to ease neuralgic pain. The straw stem of dried lavender has been burnt in bundles as a deodorant and disinfectant in sick rooms. Next medicinal plant is ginger. 
Now, what are its benefits? Yes, number one is stomach soothing effects. Next one is easing post surgery nausea and worn. Third one is sipping ginger tea can help calm and stomach as well as ease congestion you have got a cold. Next one is Amla. Yes, now what are its benefits? To stimulate appetite, use pickles and preserve made from the green fruits. For hemorrhage, diarrhea and dysentery. Seed fried in ghee and ground in congee is applied as lab to the forehead to stop bleeding from the nose. For hiccup or for painful respiration it can be used. Use juice or extract of the fruit combined with honey and pipli. Due to vitamin C and polyphenol is an antioxidant. Benefits heart, eyes and brain. Next common term is turmeric. Yes. Now what are the uses of turmeric? It stimulate digestion, boost liver function, curcumin a means of reducing breast cancer risk among women. When paired with vitamin D, curcumin may help protect against Alzheimer's disease. Curcumin can protect against liver damage as well. Now, our next healing plant is clove. Now, let us study what are the health benefits of clove. Yes, help with cough and cold symptoms, natural mouth freshener, fights, nausea, Help gastric upsets, avoid bloating, reduces mouth ulcers, fights, tooth pain and bleeding gums, help control high cholesterol levels, increases blood circulation, antiseptic. Now the last healing plant that we are going to study today is peppermint. Peppermint's leaf tea is used for relief of an upset stomach. Mint oil can actually dissolve gallstones. It is imperative to maintain a low fat diet loss weight and exercise regularly to help the peppermint oil work best. It is also used as an appetite stimulant and for a refreshing and cleansing facial wash. It is also used for that purpose also. So after this we are going to do the exercise that is given on page number 35 yes the heading is read the benefits of the following plants and unscramble their names now as we have already studied about the healing plants now we are going to solve our exercise based on the studies we have done yes there are some clues given so let us read these clues and try to identify the name of the healing plant. Yes, the number one is it helps to reduce cholesterol, a type of fat in the blood. It also helps to cure cold and cough. And your answer is garlic. Second one is it is one of the oldest plant 
used in cosmetics because it is good for skin, hair and nails. And your answer is aloe vera. Third one. The oil of this flower soothes the mind and skin. It is used in massage as an aroma oil. And your answer is lavender. Fourth one. It is good for digestion. Tea flavored with it helps to get rid of nose and throat congestion. And your answer is ginger. Fifth one. It is also called the Indian gooseberry. It is rich in vitamin C and contain fibers and minerals. It is good for eyesight and digestion. And your answer is amla. Sixth, it reduces swelling caused by an injury or damage to the tissue. It is also antiseptic in nature. And your answer is turmeric. Number seven, provides relief from toothache, also cures cough and bad breath. And your answer is cloth. Last one, it has a soothing and cooling property. It also acts like an antiseptic. It soothes the stomach in case of indigestion. And your answer is mint. So that is all we have to do with our page number 35. After that we are going to start our new topic that is given on page number 36 of your general knowledge book and its heading is life cycle. Now there is a diagram of the food chain that is given now, first of all, we should know that how does the food chain actually works. Now, what is the food chain actually? A food chain is the transfer of energy from one creature to another. Within a food chain, some living things create energy and some uses the energy. Now, I just explain this diagram to you. Here in this food chain, the food chain begins with a plant. As you all can see plant, in plant, a uh, plant is eaten by grasshopper. So what does it mean that grasshopper is a consumer? And after that, the grasshopper is eaten by a rat. See. When the grasshopper eat plant, it means he is a herbivore. And because he is consuming the plant, so he is consumer. And after that, when the grasshopper is eaten by a rat, it means the rat is eating an animal. It means he is a omnivore. He can eat the green things as well as animals. So he is an omnivore. And here the rat is a consumer. And after that the rat is then eaten by the snake. Snake is also a consumer but snake does not eat plants so he is a carnivore. He is a consumer because he is consuming the rat but he is a carnivore. The snake is eaten by a hawk consumer. Again, the hawk is a consumer because hawk eat the snake. After that, when the hawk dies, fungi and other decomposers break down the dead hawks into nutrients which are released into the soil. And when these nutrients are released into the soil, these nutrients can help the plant to grow. So student, this is the full life cycle, full circle of life and energy. I hope you all understand. 
Now, a food chain has three basic parts. The very first is producer, second one is consumer and the third one is decomposer. So, it means that the food chain begins with a producer and ends with a decomposer. Now, we will study that what do you mean by producer? Yes, plants are producers of energy as they make their own food using sunlight, soil and other nutrients. Second one is consumer. There are three main types of consumers in the animal kingdom. First one is herbivore, grass eating animals. Second one is carnivore, animal eating, flesh eating animals. Omnivore, the consumers who eat both plants as well as animals. They are known as omnivore. Third one is decomposer. Bacteria and fungi are decomposers. They eat dead plants and animals. So now we are going to do the exercise that is given on page number 37 related to the food chain. So let us start. Yes. Answer the following questions by choosing the correct option. First one is, the arrow in a food chain means, is eaten by or eats? Yes, you have seen one arrow in the food chain. What does it mean actually? It means, is eaten by. So, your correct answer is option number A, is eaten by. Second one. Another name for plant eater is omnivore or herbivore. I have already told you plant eating animals are called herbivore. So, the correct answer is option B, herbivore. Third one is an example of decomposer is fungi or grasshopper. I have already told you who are decomposer. Yes, your correct answer is option number A, fungi. Fourth one. A network of many food chain is called a food necklace or food web. Yes, your correct answer is option number B, food web. Fifth one, where do plants get their energy from? From consumers or from sun? Yes, your correct answer is sun. Plants get their energy from the sun. Number six, you are in your garden and you can see a beetle insect a garden snake a lily plant a spider and an eagle flying in the air now fill in the boxes with the correct names to show who eat what so student let us fill these boxes yes in the food chain we have read that first one is first producer is plant so in first box given we will write lily plant lily plant is eaten by beetle beetle is eaten by spider spider is eaten by garden snake and finally the garden snake is eaten by an eagle who is a decomposer so we end up with this so students you have to do your exercises of page number 34, 35 and 37 in your books itself. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you all are very fine at your home. So, thank you all.